Thank you. I feel like I'm trapped. I don't feel like I can break that trap on my own. Try some white rice. How about that? Did she really finish all that? I mean, like, what am I even asking? Of course she did, but whoa. Thank you, and that was really good, baby. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I mean, she she is a couple of burgers away from a doctor now visit too, this one here. Hey, Frugivore, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. I'm Freely, I'm a fruit-based nutritionist, and I'm here to help you stop binge eating and lose weight. Yay! Without any calorie restriction. And I do that through one-on-one -on -one coaching if you're interested in that, and also fruit-based meal plan creation and my books. Check out my books. I've actually got signed copies that I, I put a full paragraph and I sign it as well and I send it out to you wherever you are in the world. So there's a link to all my books and services in the description below. So today's video, we're going to get back to my 600 pound life. And um, I have actually got another video, which you're probably going to see soon, Super Size vs. Super, super Skinny, that I uploaded a couple, like quite a few days ago, but it's still being approved by YouTube. So just wait, out, wait for that. My 600 pound life. This is season 12, episode five. I've got some rice here with some sweet chili sauce. This really plain right now. Um, but this isn't all I'm going to be having for dinner, but just a little bit of rice. If you got a smoothie or if you got your rice or potatoes or pasta, whatever you got, let's eat it together and let's watch this together. And let me know in the comments below what you think of these videos. And yeah, just leave your commentary as well, because I, I enjoy reading it. So let's get to it. My 600 pound life. So how motivated you are to change your eating habits? I'm very motivated. If you could pile a dog crap there and you told me to bend over and start eating it, that's what I would do. Oh, oh boy. We got a feisty one here. We have a feisty, feisty, spicy one. Awesome. Maybe this is going to be a, an interesting show. She sounds keen. She sounds like she's ready to change. But they do talk a lot, don't they? And don't always change. We will see. <laughs> Sorry, here I am stuffing my face. I'm going to try not to do this too much. But she's 58. So, wow. She's actually got to a pretty old age and, and, morbid, and carrying a morbidly obese body. That's actually very impressive. I haven't seen, I don't, I haven't seen many this old, have you? Okay, she's got a little grandson in there. He's in like a cot. How old is that kid? I, I think he's kind of past that, the cot age. Oh. Oh, dear. Some mornings I wake up and I think, thank God I'm awake. He let me live one more day. But when I first go to stand up, I can't hardly stand up. There we go. TLC at it again with that angle. Honestly, you should be ashamed, TLC. This is like give like let the woman have some dignity and just film her up higher i mean i hate how they do this it's really gross uh, my back is hurting so bad and that guy is up right there and i know it's because of the weight yeah as normal it just feels i mean i mean it's pretty amazing that she can stand up by herself like that hey that's crazy. Like most of the time when they're at this size, I'm not sure how big she is, like how much she weighs yet. But yeah, most of the time they need a lot, need a lot more help. Like somebody's got a big machete stabbed in your back and just turning it and digging and scraping around in there. Oxygen off. Oxygen off. Okay, she's on the oxygen. Like, yeah, she says about the, like, the pain that she's experiencing being like this, but it's not enough pain for them to change, is it? Obviously now she's going to doctor now and all of that, but before this, leading up to this, how did she get to this size? Like, doesn't that pain motivate you? Like, to stop? To be like, hey, I need to make a change now. You know, I just don't get it. My stepson and my daughter-in-law share a room with me because Sam doesn't want to leave me by myself at night. She's afraid I'll fall, so she wants to be right there next to me. Very wow. So she's, 
her, her um, uh, sorry, her relative is looking after her, it seems, and that's pretty amazing that she's giving up, like, her own privacy to look after her. But see, again, being a burden on others, these people seem to be comfortable with that because they would have changed ages ago if they weren't, right? They wouldn't have got to this point. Very hard for me to maneuver myself around. And I have to get Sam to help me because I can't walk too far. Can you help me up here, please? Oh, oh well, don't fall. Right now. Honestly, I would feel pathetic asking someone to help me up a step. I, would, I could not do it. I'd feel too pathetic. You know what I'm saying? I'm not making fun of her or anything like that. But in myself, I'd be just like, what? I can't get up a step without burdening somebody else, asking them to help me. That's just not me. Oh. I'm currently living in the house with my grandson, Nathan, and his fiance, Kat, and Sam and RJ, and then, of course, my fiance, Russell. If it wasn't for my family being here to help me and to support me, I don't know what I'd done. So this could be a big part of the reason she has got to the age that she has because she's had a lot of family support. We haven't seen, like some of them don't have that support. They always seem to have a feeder, yes, but not that level of support. We got like a whole team behind you, right? They've really been a, a lifesaver. You do what you gotta do for people you love. But you know, the weight that she's gaining is not good on her health. The weight is too much. I gotta go pee. And we all... When it comes to the point where you have to turn sideways to get in the door, you've, got, you've definitely gone too far. Okay, just keep that in mind. Don't get to the point where you have to turn sideways to get into an average doorway. I'll help her out and try to take care of her. Oh, whoa, don't fall. Whoa. Here comes the fun part. Three years ago, I am impressed with these porcelain toilets. Honestly, I am. Like, don't, do they have a weight limit? Because they have been put to the test big time in these videos. And uh, RJ moved from Texas up to Arkansas here and met the family and moved into a small little house that Roseanne and Russell had. And I've been with them ever since. It's stuck on your Okay, so I think what is happening here is she is like probably a paid carer. She's probably on a pension because when you have obesity, like in the United States, if you have like an illness or a disability as a result of that self-inflicted chosen obesity, then you are eligible for benefits. So I have a feeling that is probably what's happening. Your leg. Yeah. Always good. I shower oh. twice a week. I know that doesn't sound a lot. I should do it more, but it's just so hard. Oh. It was very hard for me to ask Sam to help me shower. It, it took everything I had. Oh. I fell two or three times before I would actually ask her to help me in the shower because I didn't want to ask for help. I was embarrassed to ask for help because she has to help wash my backside and stuff. She has to wash it. Do not let yourself get to the stage where other people are washing your ass for you. This is like unacceptable. So humiliating and degrading. How embarrassing. What, like, oh, I, I can just imagine. This is like my worst nightmare to be like that. For me, because I can't keep my balance good enough to get over there. I have to hold on with both hands while she washes me. I mean, it's embarrassing. I mean, it's, they talk like, oh, it's embarrassing. I hate having my family in this position, blah, blah, blah. But not that much. They don't hate, they probably actually secretly love it because they're not changing the situation. Sure, now she's going to doctor now, but look, to get to this point, she's had a lot of opportunities to think about the family, think about the burden and change, but she hasn't. It's because that junk food, that yummy junk food is more important. That's the reality. It makes me very, very unhappy that I can't do things on my own and I can't get around on my own. 
I'm gonna, you're gonna go ahead and lay down and I'll go ahead and get your breakfast and stuff ready for you. Okay, bye. I'm worried. She just said she's gonna go and get, get breakfast ready for her. This, this is a scary zone. This is when, whoa, -oh, because like, she's getting, why is she making breakfast for her? Why can't she make her, herself her breakfast? Stress leads to eating. Eating leads to gaining weight. Weight leads to getting mad. Mad leads to getting more. Hang on, hang on. It doesn't need to be like that. I like how she's speaking in like a, uh, what is it, third person or, you know, just not, I, I do this, I get stressed and I eat, I do this. You know, there's not a lot of self-responsibility, like the languaging, you know, she's giving herself that out. It's like, oh, it's not me. It's this stress. It's this thing over here that I'm kind of out of control of. You know, th this is important. This is important. So the hensies again. She's eating and it's just a cycle. It's getting very bad and I've got to get it. Oh my goodness. Uh, is, is that enough meat? You got enough animal, animal in there? That's a lot of patties. Hopefully that's not all for her, right? This, this is next level stopped before it gets to where so much better there's no coming back i think it just i just felt how much i've changed over the last 20 years it makes me sick at my stomach i just my gosh have you noticed so many of these individuals are slamming their menstruations down so much the unfertilized reproductive cycle of a chicken this will make you fat like look look at this amount that like, you <laughs> It's just such a huge amount. I like, yeah, I guess this is how you get morbidly obese, right? You've seen it, the meat, the eggs. Can't believe that it's gotten this bad. You fix me a good breakfast, huh? Yes, ma'am. All right. You fixed me a good breakfast, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. All right. I mean, like that is, that is a dysfunctional relationship to begin with. The fact that they're they both know it's unhealthy, but she's feeding her. She's, she knows it makes her fat, but she keeps feeding her that rubbish. And they're acting like it's all fine. You know what I'm saying? Right, cool. Thank you. I feel like I'm trapped. I don't feel like I can break that trap on my own. Try some white rice. How about that? Because I've got a bad habit of ever since I was younger. When I get stressed, my comfort is food. Love. Everybody, and make no mistake, when the brain is using extra glucose, which it is when you are stressed, you're churning through it. You actually, your brain uses more than the rest of your body. So you're churning through that, that glucose. So you're going to get that eat. You know, that let's, okay, I need to eat signal. That's normal. Everybody gets this. You're not special in that way. It's just that you're making uneducated choices. You're making the wrong choice. You know it, but you, your standards are low. Other people's standards are higher who aren't getting to this size. You know, there's different stages. So it's all a choice. And stress, yes, will make you hungrier. My biological father was an alcoholic. She's got it just resting on her chest there. I guess that's the table for today. But my mom was always there. My mother was a wonderful woman. My mom married my stepdad when I was four. I mean, we were pretty close at first and I called him. They don't even bother with the table. She just, the boobs are just holding it up there. I mean, I feel like it could just all just topple down at any moment. Dad, and every Sunday we went to church. In fact, him and I sang in church. He played the guitar and we sang. We'd sing all kinds of songs, and our favorite one was the old rugged cross. My mom loved that one. In fact, the day before she passed away on a Monday, I remember we went to church that Sunday. And we sang for that day, but the next thing I know, my mom was gone. My step. I don't want to think about that time when my mom goes because she's an amazing woman too. Mom, if you're watching, you know I love you. 
But yeah, I mean, obviously that's traumatic in anyone's life. Dad, he started doing crimes and he got caught and ended up, he went to prison. The world didn't seem right without my mother. After I buried my mom, I couldn't function. I kept getting more depressed, and the more depressed I got, the more I ate. It's because she has a problem dealing with real life events. I mean, obviously it's horrible. You never want to lose your mom, but it happens. It's going to happen to all of us, and it's already happened to some of us. So, you know, it, it's this it's whole procrastination in dealing with actual real life events that everybody has to face like she's obviously just not facing the emotions with it and and also she's nutritionally deficient she's malnourished because of the choices she's probably always made she's probably had some weight issues for a long long time so yeah there's a bit to unpack there and i just kept eating and eating and eating and eating if I picked up something, I couldn't just lay it down without eating it all. I just... This was me too, though. This was me too. I had a big binging issue. I couldn't have anything in the house that was chocolate or anything, really. Like, uh, even white bread. I would, like, binge on white bread with a heap of butter and honey. I'd eat, like, a whole entire loaf in a sitting. So I had this binge eating too, but I was exercising and I was doing other like dodgy stuff to counteract that weight gain. So, you know, this is not a unique position. We can all be in this and I have, but I was just dealing with it differently. I just didn't know what to do with myself. I just, I figured if I just sat there that I could just wither away and the Lord would take me and I could go be with my mom, but it didn't work that way. I was gaining the weight because I was eating more, because I was depressed and... Yeah, but it's not just, I mean, she said because I was eating more. The reason they eat more and more because the brain is asking for more nutri like actual nutrition, vitamins, living food, not just this bunker crap all the time. You know, bunker food that you would put in your bunker and um, eat during wartime as a last resort a lot of this stuff that they eat. So that causes her to eat more and more and more of the wrong foods rather than making the right choice and then she'd be more satisfied. She needs more fiber, obviously more living food. I really can't stress this enough. Don't let your health get as bad as mine was. Don't be that 465 pound person with you know, high blood pressure who you know, had sleep apnea, high cholesterol, you know, just that depression, just miserable, just feeling dead inside. And important to add is a whopping 95% of people fail on diets because people aren't eating close to their natural frugivore diet. The people in these videos following my diet and lifestyle advice are, and that's why they have kept the weight off for years. And as long as they continue eating unlimited of the right food and following the lifestyle principles, they will keep it off for life. It was a vicious cycle after my mother passed. When I was 13 or 14, I weighed around 250. So that's when I realized I got to do something with my health. When I got into high school, I joined ROTC. And I was big, but I wasn't big. Girl, 250, 250 pounds is big. It, it is, okay? Um, <laughs> It's a very subjective, isn't it? The way she's like, I was big, but not big. So I guess she's comparing to like morbidly obese individuals like she is now. It's all about who you compare to. We were always marching with our uniforms and our rifles. And we would march and practice three and four hours a day in Texas heat. I would lose a lot of weight during that. When I would get up and have to put my uniform on and go to the ROTC, it was like I was going to my safe haven. We all hung out together. We'd go to football games and have after game parties. In fact, she had more purpose in her life, obviously, and she had more movement. Very important. You've got to move your body. If you have a problem with your weight, you have to move as well. I hate to say it, you can't just eat healthy and not move at all. That's just not going to work out well for you. Sure, you might get slim, but you're not going to be healthy, healthy like you can be. 
my fiance and I were in ROTC together, Russell was always the one that was there to make sure that I was okay and that I was safe. He always kept me right with him. He always protected me. But it wasn't mine and his time yet. Right out of high school, I married Jesse. I knew not to. I knew I shouldn't have. That's probably why I didn't go to be a doctor or a lawyer, because I did get married and ended up pregnant. And that was Christopher. He lives in Arizona. Jesse, my son's dad. I'm not saying Jesse was a bad person. Jesse was a good person. I mean, he just had his demeanor. We were married. Is that cream cheese or butter on that? I don't know. There's a thick, thick spread. Married for seven years. And it was fun when we first got together. And then we divorced. When it ended, it didn't affect me at all because I knew I shouldn't have done it. I just did it out of stupidity. I worked at a daycare center and I could take my son with me. Yeah, I worked there for four years, enjoyed it. I was still big. I was around 250 pounds, but I... Yeah, that is big. I don't know what her height is, but she doesn't look super tall. Stayed active all day working around kids. Yeah, activity, activity, activity. It really, really matters. I stayed active all day long working around kids. Then I was at the auto shop and I went to pick my car up and Ray was there. Well, we started talking. He asked me out. I said, yeah. We knew each other from maybe three months and got married. And it lasted for 15 years. We had a good marriage. Oh, I feel like he might have died. You know what I'm saying? Like, you lose your partner young when, when you're like this. And when you're a feeder yourself, these people generally eat a lot of it themselves. I'm not sure yet. But. It just, it didn't work out between him and I because he decided he wanted to start sleeping around with my best friend of 22 years. Lovely. We all need friends like that, don't we? Oh, gosh. That liked to kill me because I had no one in my life. So I don't talk to her no more. Him and her are married now. But I mean, these are just everyday challenges that a lot of us face, right? At some point in our lives. It, it doesn't justify letting yourself become morbidly obese. But yes, we're learning about her past. I, I get it. And yeah, you don't want a partner like that. But maybe I'm thinking how much actual, you know, interaction was he getting with her i wonder how much they actually do at that size i'm not sure i guess i mean yeah you never know it's going to be harder he was the one that meant the most to me i had no one to go to no one to turn to and i sat in this apartment with the curtains closed all the lights off and ate and sat in the dark Did she really finish all that? I mean, like, what am I even asking? Of course she did, but whoa. Thank you, and that was really good, baby. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I mean, she, she is a couple of burgers away from a doctor now visit too, this one here. But like, just them talking like positively about basically killing her is really sad. I could see my weight increasing. And then my depression got so bad that I ended up going on disability. I got your medications. Right. I promise I did not know that, okay? So she's on disability and she's just come in saying, I've got your, your medication. So these are, I'll say it again, I'll say it every session because we need to face this, we need to have this discussion. People need to know the burden that is happening as a result of choosing obesity, right? Choosing it. The prescription medication, very expensive, the um, pension. Then we've got, the, these are all taxpayer taxpayer funded. Righty, babe. Social services sent a counselor to my house, but somehow she came up with a new plan. First, she got me to the point where I could stand and walk again. Big Pharma loves these people. Look at, look at the amount of prescription medication that they're just 
pushing into this woman, right? Like it's just terrible. And the taxpayers again are, are, are paying. Big Pharma's got it twisted around, so we're actually paying for this and it's just so, so wrong. Don't get me wrong, of course, like if you need help, uh, there's situations where you need help or you need some medication or something, like they happen in people's lives. But when you're choosing to be this way, okay, when you know it's not right, when you're making, you're shoveling the rubbish in every day, that that's not okay, that's really irresponsible at the very least. Before I knew it, she had me talked into going to my 20th reunion for ROTC. Well, I need to be taken too. My life changed in the most positive way possible. Because Russell and I seen each other for the first time in probably about 15, 20 years. He said, hey baby. And we stood there and talked for a while. And three months after we seen each other, we become a couple. This one needs to be three times. Russell, he's big, but he's not heavy, heavy. And now he drives an 18-wheeler. I ride with him. Just me and him just ride and talk and enjoy each other's company and hope. It's amazing that she can actually fit in the cab, right? I think about things like this, like the car and the cab, but the thing, everything is bigger in America, that is true. Old hands and, I don't know, just sweetness. After five years together, he even took me on my first cruise. We went to Cozumel and Jamaica with my best friend Christy and her husband Jeremy. Be careful going with the best friend. Remember what happened last time. And at the end of the cruise, Russell looks at me and he says, do you love me? I said, you know I do. I said, you're the love of my life. He said, here, I want you to marry me. Oh, that is sweet. And I just started bawling. <laughs> and he put my ring on my finger. When I first met her, I didn't know what to make of her because she was a little bit of a wild child back then. But I liked her. She was cute. Uh, the cuteness factor has probably left the chat. I don't know. Yeah, she could be still cute, I guess, but at this stage, I mean, morbidly obese isn't exactly cute, is it? So he must be a feeder himself. Russell and I are still happy, but when it comes to my weight, I have a real bad self-esteem when it comes to my weight. He has to keep reassuring me that nothing is wrong between us because I well, he should be actually honest and say, hey, this is not good. This is killing you. This is destroying the relationship because it's just going to, unless they're just real full on, they're there to feed. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's he's got to be honest with her. It sound, this reassurance sounds like avoidance. I'll sit and wonder, well, I wonder who he's with now. I wonder what girl he's got in his truck now. Then it leads to stress. And I'll eat and eat and eat, trying to satisfy all of my problems, but it never works. It's just having low standards for your, the actions you take in life. It's low standards. You've got to raise your standards. You've got to realize you're worth more than this. And, you know, just lying there eating is just a complete waste of life, obviously, eating rubbish. But, yeah, anyway. It don't make them go away. It just makes me bigger. Well, I've got to get this weight off of me. So it's like she goes from the bed to the lounge room, probably to watch TV and eat more. I can feel a physical and mental change in my body. Mental because I don't want to be this big and physically because I just can't get up and do it for me to get the weight off. Yeah. You look tired. Just a little bit. Oh, yep. Yep, he's a big boy. He's obese himself. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> All right, don't break my neck. Oh, I ain't going to. I wouldn't be able to give you kisses then and hugs. What you want for dinner, my love? What are you thinking? Oh, no. No, I ask you first. What's with that baby voice? 
Oh no, this is, you know, these, the relationships, sometimes they're a bit, a bit like this, you know, put the baby voice on like the last guy did, William too, I think William, one of them was putting the baby voice on, you know, manipulating the partner. Nene, we can get Nene to cook us some good pork chops on the grill. <laughs> there you go. It's a lot of... There you go, more meat, more fats. Pork chops. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is a lot of money. This is expensive. I cook a lot of food, cook a whole bunch on the grill, trying to help out, trying to try to do what I can. Her knees are getting to where she. I mean, like he before he said her weight is getting so big. The is that a son or a brother-in-law or something? Said her weight's getting so much, and now, now look what he's making her. It's obviously not healthy, but. Anyway. Can't hardly walk around anymore because of her weight. Two, three. Come on, other hands, other hands. Biggest thing that motivates me to lose weight is I want to get back in the truck with Russell. It breaks my heart that I can't go out and do things with my grandkids and great grandkids. Everything that I do with them has to be done at home because I don't have the strength or stamina to go anywhere. And that's devastating to me. Has she got three, at least three of those huge pork pieces? That's insane. What? And did she have more menstruation than I just saw the yellow or corn maybe? When Mimi met Russell, Mimi's life changed. She was more happier. She was more willing to do a little more things. You know, she was wanting to get up and go, go on dates and do things. She was less depressed. And then, really? you know, Russ started going out on the road. And, and then that's when all her heart, you know, her problems started happening. I'm really tired. I think I'm going to go to bed. All right, we'll clean up. All right, we oh. got I think there's also eggs there as well, like scrambled eggs. Am I right? Let me know in the comments. This. Thank you, bud. I'll be waiting a minute. I'm gonna get a little man ready for bed. With all my heart issues, my time on earth with my family can be cut short at any time. I mean, how deep can your relationship really, really be when you are like this, when you're so, you're such a burden on others? This is not a healthy relationship. I, I don't blame the partner for going elsewhere. Obviously, you know, he should break up first, but you can see why. He's not having a lot of joy here. I mean, I'm not saying him, but like, you know, previously that guy, I can imagine. Oh, 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 me. I got you, baby. I want to see my great grandkids at least make it to school. I lie here awake at night feeling helpless and knowing I'm not too far from dying. Oh. There's a real defeatist kind of energy, isn't there? I'm defeated. Has her health issues and if she needs to lose the weight to where she can get out and do things like she used to. I pray for someone to save my life. I mean, he obviously needs to get going as well. Did you see the massive belly that he has? And apparently, uh, Truck drivers is the most, the fattest like profession you can be part of, which makes sense, right? You're sitting on your ass all the time. They're going to these like service stations, eating crap, going to the next one, eating crap. It's yeah, very conducive to that. Because it feels like my whole world is falling apart. I have so much to live for, I need help. Good night, baby. Love you. It's a very depressing life. It's a very depressing life and it's, but it was a choice. We all make, we all make our bed, right? And then we have to sleep in it. Yeah, yeah those bags are dad's. Do you have your uh, chair and everything you need in the van already? Yeah, the chair's already in the van, isn't it, RJ? You get it in and out? Yep. Today I'm gonna go see Dr. Now. Going all the way to Houston. The whole family is helping out. Well, helping out in this way, but they, they all love to eat together, don't they? They all let to feed her. I'm excited, but I'm nervous because I don't know what he's got in store for me. 
but I know whatever he's got in store for me to lose this weight, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'll tell you what he's got in store for you. 1,200 calories. Yeah. Give me a kiss. Oh. All right, get in the bear and everybody's talking. Everybody's talking. All right, <laughs> come on. RJ and he's now free to go and play. If you know what I mean. Sam are going to be taking me, and I'm grateful for them because I don't know how I'd get there otherwise. Call me when y'all make it where y'all going. Okay, I love you. I love you too. Love you, baby. I'm going to miss you. Bye, baby. Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, baby. Love you too. So are you ready for this long trip? Not really. <laughs> but we're going to get to meet Dr. Now. Yeah, no, I get to meet him, yeah. I, I know. I'm excited, but I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. It, it's going to be a hard, long ride. The, the quicker we get there, the better off we're going to be. Well, so she seems to be okay sitting in the actual seat, so she mustn't be anywhere near as big as some of them. Remember that girl, I can't remember what her name was, Samantha, I think it is? One of the first videos I did, she was like nearly a thousand pounds. It's about a nine hour drive. I didn't have to pee when I was at the gas station. I have to pee now. Oh my goodness, I thought the car was breaking down. Like the last two or three episodes, all the cars have just been breaking down from the weight. Holy smokes, y'all. We're stopping after two hours because my body is hurting me so bad, worse than I ever thought. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality. Even just sitting is painful for these individuals. We'll have to tackle the rest tomorrow. See all the extra stuff you need? All like these are kind of wheels for like a wheelie chair or something. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I almost almost went my feet out. <laughs> Bring a little blanket for you. It's okay. No. Oh. oh. You okay? Yeah, my knee's just not wanting to function with oh, me right now. Oh. There we go. Okay. I'll go in over here. Wow, there's some nifty wheelchairs. Really strong, right? Really strong and very like movable. We are in this way. You might go. I got it. Put it in this one. Yeah, she's going on that one. Back up right here. Struggle is real. Oh. 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 Honey, my oh. Wow, you can you can hear her, right? You can hear her. It's like she's having an asthma attack just from moving a couple of steps. Oxygen, where's it at? What do you do with it? 
Hurry. Okay. Yeah, why didn't you grab that one? Is it on? You got air? Yeah. Well, imagine being hooked up to oxygen. Oh, geez, the pain is just incredible for these people. Okay, let's just get the bead. Alrighty. Night, night. Good night, guys. I love y'all. Love you too. Thank you for your help. Not a problem. We didn't make it quite as far as I wanted to before we stopped last night. Good to see that she's not driving. You know, I've seen enough of them driving. Well, maybe not these long trips, but they should never be in the driving seat. Honestly, they are a heart attack risk. Now we're looking at a six or seven hour trip and that sure ain't gonna be no fun. It's gonna be hard on my body, especially with my knee. It's gonna start hurting pretty bad on my knee. But While she's sitting there, it's gonna hurt her knee. But it might be hard now, but in the long run, it'll all be worth it. Yes, good attitude, sis. She's in the crisps. She's on the way to doctor now and she's into the oily fatty crisps. I'm eating jibs for breakfast. It's not the best breakfast in the world, but it's something. It's something. <laughs> Is that a justification to eat crisps? It's something. <laughs> it's not the best, but you know. Shocker. My knee is killing me. I think we're going They need to roll her in the back. This is probably part of the reason that the others get on in the back because they can just kind of stretch out and just be like secure, like just lying there, right? Stop and eat in the car. My head's starting to hurt. We're gonna get some fast food. And we're gonna get some fast food. And eat it fast and get on the road. Gonna so go in the dresser? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. yeah. And see, they would justify that they're on a trip, you know, they're on a trip so that they've got no other options. They've got to eat fast food. That's rubbish. I've been to America, obviously not all over America, but I'm sure where they are, they can have healthier options. Like get liters of juice even, get some sandwiches maybe, uh, you know, fruit obviously, but uh, you know, get, get rice. There's a whole lot of options, but there's a lot of excuses, you know. I want one of the steak basket. With a drink? Yeah. Give me a plain hamburger. Huh? Some jalitos. The, an order of the jalitos? A mozzarella cheese stick. Okay. Six piece. Six piece? Rank. She's ordering a mozzarella cheese stick. She's on the way to see Dr. Now. She's, wow. she's on oxygen. She's, <laughs> she's on the, in the drive through getting a mozzarella stick. Oh, plus like a whole lot of other stuff. But wow. You came in at a good time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, things are good. Keep going. We're going to have to get Snoopy in to do some reactions with me, I think. Thumbs up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you soon. Ranch, make that two of those. Ranch, okay. I can't do anything fast or easy. Just to get out of the car hurts my back and my knees. The only thing you can do fast and easy is order the takeout and eat it. Oh, I get it. 
They're celebrating this junk food that is like a, oh, a huge like resource burner as well. It's uh, taking animals' lives unnecessary. It's just bad, 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 and they're celebrating it. Yep, I got it. Y'all have a good day, y'all. Okay, I got my food now, for y'all. Huh. <laughs> She's excited. Hey, guys, guess what? What? We're on our way to Houston to see yeah. Dr. Now. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm pretty tired. I'm I'm scared. I mean, I'm I'm really nervous. But my insides are jumping so much. I mean, people these people wonder why others in society like in the community look at them. Like they're in they're morbidly obese. They're in a wheelchair like some of them are particularly at certain times and she's got like an oxygen tank there. People must be just like, what is going on? With joy. Here we go. Because I, I can't even explain or describe what kind of a life changer this is going to be for me. Oh, Lordy. I'm going to bed and I'm not getting up early at all. Oh, wait a minute, I have to though, don't I? how big these houses are. I know they're gorgeous. Okay, let's get to Dr. Now, shall we? Shall we? Okay. I hate the Texas weather now. It's hot. <laughs> they're all obese. They're all obese. And it's just enabling, enabling, feeding, feeding going on a lot here. Rose. At my heaviest, I was almost 700 pounds. And that was 20 years ago. Wow, she was 700 pounds 20 years ago. I am, in, I am like dying to find out how much she weighs actually. So I really hope that I'm a heck of a lot lighter. Everything's riding on this. My whole future, my whole life, everything. Now you can step up on the scale. Cause I need Dr. Now to help me. I've got to get the weight off. I can't do it on my own. I've yes, you can. Yes, you can. See, that's part of the problem that she doesn't believe she can, so she won't got to get help. If I don't get help now, I'm going to die. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that you've lasted this long. I'm here at Dr. Now's clinic for the very first time. I haven't weighed myself in about 20 years, and I've been avoiding it for a reason. Wow, she hasn't weighed herself in 20 years because it's just not physically possible. The size of the weights, you know, you have to go to a zoo to, to weigh yourself. Wow. Yep, that's big. I'm impressed she's walking around. Like I said, I'm impressed. Well, I was hoping it would be even lower, but I'm glad I'm in the 500s. Which way is it? Well, I know I've hit a wall with what I can lose on my own, so I'm really hoping and praying he'll help me like I need. 
sad too seeing her like this and also them overweight as well like she's the elder right she is the one who should be setting the healthy example it's really sad seeing that she's actually yeah setting a really poor example obviously but as an elder you've got to step up It was easy putting it on, but it's going to be hard taking it off. Not really. If you eat a high carb, low fat, plant based diet, it's not going to be hard. It's going to be like enjoyable. Obviously, there's going to be some shift. You change your taste buds every two weeks or so. You get a new set. So you start to shift towards craving other foods, like actual, actual healthy food. <laughs> Hello, how y'all doing? Fine, and you? I'm doing okay. You must be Rose. Yes, I am. So, who did you bring with you? This is Sam and RJ, my stepson and his fiance. Hello. Well, nice to meet y'all. So what can I help you with today? My weight. I, I was <laughs> trying to lose it on my own, and I was <laughs> thought I was doing pretty good, and then I got sick. I ended up in the hospital and ended up on oxygen and I, I can't do for myself as good as I could. Well, I think she's going to be a really high risk patient, the fact that she is older and that she's on oxygen, but we'll wait to hear what doctor now says, but I have a feeling. And I, I, I need the weight off of me. Okay. How long have you been in this motorized wheelchair? Um, I've had my motorized chair for like 20 years. 20 years you've been in that wheelchair? No, I, I can walk. It's just, now it's hard for me to walk long distances. I understand that, but you've been in a motorized wheelchair for 20 years. I've had it for 20 years. I don't use it all the time. All right, so what do you do all day? All day I sit and I eat. I binge eat. I, I eat out of depression. I, if I get a hold, if, there's a box of zebra cakes brought in. I think I have to have every one of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like all of us would want to eat them all too, but we have a bit of self-control here. And I sit and I eat every one of them. Um, so hold on. So you eat all day and you're here to... He's looking quite tubby himself. You figure out what to do? It, I mean, I... I don't have... Sorry, let me, let me of zebra cakes brought in, I think I have to have every one of them. And I sit and I eat every one of them. Um, so hold on. So you eat all day and you're here to figure out what to do? It, I mean, I... I don't have magic to stop you from eating all day. I know, I have to do it myself. So what is uh, different today from past 58 years that you... I have, I, I'm gonna stop eating, but I have to have, I have the willpower. Now I have to have the knowledge. The knowledge is gonna come from you. The willpower is gonna come from me. So you didn't know eating like you have been was it not the right thing? Exactly. I love that he's calling them out, calling her out. Okay, you didn't know that before. Uh, evidently I didn't because I, what I've done, you can see evidently it ain't working. Oh, this is such a lack of like personal responsibility here, right? Ownership of your actions. So, so I've got to have something that works. What do you, what do you eat all day? I eat whatever I can get my hands on. Uh, I eat. Well, um, how do you get it? Uh, you well, I, oh, I ask her to bring it to me. Who? Sam, and she'll cook it and bring it to me, but she only cooks what I tell her to cook. So she's gonna bring what you ask for? She brings what I ask for. But if she doesn't bring it, what happened? The world come to an end, or are you gonna yeah. attack? Yeah. No. If if, I, if she don't bring it to me, then I don't need it. So you came all the way from Arkansas to tell me it's your fault to tell people to get you food to eat, and you want me to change that? Oh no, I want the knowledge. You have the knowledge, the the weight loss knowledge, the. Right he really does not. He just, he's a surgeon. That's as far as it goes.
right programs, the right type of foods to eat. You're going to give me that knowledge so that I can have that knowledge so that I can cook the right types of foods and eat the right types of foods. Yeah. Doctor now seems like he's a little bit feisty today, like a little just over it, right? Besides eating all day, what else do you do all day? Lay in the bed. So you have a goal in your life? My goal is to lose, to get the weight off, to play with my grandkids, to be able to get into the car, to be able to walk in the store, to be able to go do things with my grandkids. Those are my goals. So how motivated you are to change your eating habits? I'm very motivated. Just like I told them, if you told me to lose, there's a pile of dog crap there, and you told me that's going to help me to lose weight, if I eat that dog crap for a month, bend over and start eating it, that's what I would do. Oh, shit. See, this is a problem. This is a big problem. This is what some people are like. They will just do whatever, you know, like take the weight loss drugs, starve themselves, all these. That's the problem. They don't educate themselves. They're like, oh, well, they said do this and I'll just do it because it sounds good and they know and I don't know. And uh. That's right. how motivated I am because I want to get rid of this weight. All right. So I'm going to bring you some stuff. I want to read this stuff okay. every day. Okay. You think you can do that? Yes, sir, I can. So sit tight. I'm going to bring you some stuff. Okay. Okay? All righty. He's bringing you the starvation plan. That's how dedicated I am to doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be straight, too, yeah. so. Yes. Mm-hmm. Rose. I mean, I don't believe her. You know, she's not, obviously not going to eat dog poo off the ground or something. You know, like, just, she's a, she's a bit of a dramatic one, okay? Uh, hopefully she's she's being honest about she's very motivated, but that example is ridiculous. But anyway, let's see what Dr. Nail says. Certainly, it seems like a handful with her personality and all the comments she makes. I just hope there is some sincerity in what she says, and she is really, finally, ready to change. But I am skeptical because the reality is, if she has the motivation she claims she does, and understand how dire her situation is, she wouldn't need any help to lose weight, especially if she did some on her own already. That is true. He, he got it. He nailed it, nailed it down there. All right. And what I got for you okay. is this. It is the plan that you need to follow for your diet and exercise. It's obviously very important that Rose take the chance to turn her life around very seriously. The only chance Rose has is going to come down to getting as much weight off her body as quickly as possible and building up her stamina. If she doesn't successfully do both those things, then it is likely her health is going to continue to decline until her... He's getting harder to understand. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. I think as he's getting older, he's getting harder to understand. Maybe it's my imagination, but yeah, he's right. Her body reaches its limit and that's it for her. So with this knowledge that you said you needed, I'm going to expect you to lose 50 pounds in two months. But if you do everything, you can lose more than that. Okay. So you think you can do... Oh, that's a conservative amount, 50 pounds. Usually it's like, what, 100 or something? Do that. I, I know I can lose it. Okay. And so we'll see how things go. Okay. All right? All righty. But I don't want you coming back here until you show me you can do that. So we'll set up a local clinic to check your weight, then we'll do a video call. Oh, you want me to do it on the computer? Yeah, or on the phone. Just oh. the, his son actually is a director and the producer, Dr. Now's son, of this whole show. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, like, okay. Yeah. All right, if you need anything, uh, give me a call. Okay, will do. All right, um, nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Uh, okay, so let's move it on. Since I've seen Dr. Now, and I've been working my butt off since coming home. I know he gave me the knowledge on what... Look what he has told her to eat. Just have a look at that plate. What, two hard-boiled eggs or some soft-boiled eggs, and maybe it's turkey bacon or something? I'm not sure, but, like, 
This is not human food, this is lizard food. To eat and how to exercise. Now it's up to me to do right by him and right by myself. It took me a minute to adjust to the diet at first. I'm, I'm, I feel a lot better. So, I mean, I'm discovering... Let's have another look at that. First. I'm, I'm, I feel a lot better. So, I mean, I... Look at that. How depressing is that? Who wants to eat that? Where is the fiber? How is she meant to feel satisfied in her stomach? This is a disaster. I'm discovering a lot of foods that I didn't think I would like, I love. I used to eat a load of junk, all that good fattening stuff. It, it, at first it was really, really hard, but I got to where I was okay with it. I mean, how many calories was that plate? Hardly anything. This is like, star this is not even semi-starvation. It's almost like pure starvation for these people. I'm fixing to do my morning workout. Sam, you want to come join me? Yes, I will. All right. Let's do this, girl. Let's, okay. I've been doing the exercises uh, morning and night. All righty. Um, What's one your first? I'm gonna do my toe touches first. Hmm. We're ready. And I, I do all the exercises. I do the um, toe touches. She's moving pretty well there. Just the twist, the arm lift. I do the leg kicks, and I, I feel like I get a little stronger every day. Really like good on them doing it together as well. It's really good to see her her um her doing it as well, you know, because obviously she needs to too. Eighteen nineteen twenty To me that makes me proud of myself that I'm doing. Good on you. I'm proud of you too. I mean, that is terrifying to be breathing like that, isn't it? Imagine your oxygen is so restricted that you might choke at any moment. My motivation is when my little grandson comes running through with them little feet just a pattern on the floor. Mimi, I need you. And when he says, I need you, that's my motivation because How's he gonna need me if I ain't here? You want me to help you? Good. She she is she she knows. She knows. Yeah. Oh, not with this arm. No, I don't know. I've done something to my shoulder, honey. Oh, oh. Can we just chop it off from right here? <laughs> Abby, Alex, y'all ready? Yep. All righty. Come on, babies. It's been two months Three. since I went to see Dr. Now, Four. and I haven't let up one bit. I do toe touches. Okay. Ready? So in the morning and at one. night before I go to bed. One. Great. This is awesome to see. She's, it sounds like she's actually committing to this, right? Back to the end. It's back to the end. Yep, they back to the end. Damn. Did I know what? You see them too, Dan? I'm nervous about this weigh-in coming up, but I'm also excited because I've been doing a lot of good work. Hello, Miss Prime, come on back. Ah, uh, you're walking. That's yes, right. I am. How are you doing? Good. It's good to see you. At some point in my life, life just didn't matter anymore. My grandkids really opened my eyes, and so I had to start caring. Wake up. Oh, that's that's lovely that they could actually provide her with that motivation because yeah she wants to be alive to see them grow up smell the coffee there's a beautiful world out there wake up and smell it yeah just don't wake up and eat it i was 564 at my last appointment 
minus 50 pounds in two months is 514. So that's what I'm hoping to see. Wow, good on you. Wow. You did it, Mama. You did it, Mama. Oh, that's good. Everybody's so supportive. That's great. It's just so sad that it's through starvation and unhealthy food, but you know, you just got to take it how you can with these shows. Hallelujah. I did it, and I can't wait to tell Dr. Now. Okay, let's get to Dr. Now. I'm down to 497. Okay. Uh, you're doing good. Thank you. I'm happy to see that you're making good progress, okay? Thank you. So, what I want you to do is uh, see your cardiologist and tell them that we are uh, looking at you for potential and uh, doing some weight loss surgery and see what they think about your heart. Okay. Once we know, your heart is... Yeah, because she is going to be a high-risk patient. She's 58. She's nearly 60. Maybe she's actually one of the oldest he has done. Strong enough for surgery, and you move down to Houston. As long as you continue to lose weight, we'll do your weight loss surgery. See if we can get you to lose, uh, you know, average of 25 pounds a month. And that would be a good uh, if you keep that up. Okay. okay. Alright, do you have any questions? No, sir. So, you want me to come to Houston? Well, if the cardiologist thing, your heart is okay. Tell yeah, surgery, then. The next step is to move here. If you want to move ahead with weight loss surgery. Okay. okay. Alright. You're doing good and making good progress. Keep it up. Alrighty, thank you. You're welcome. I hope to see you soon, Rose. Alrighty. Alright. You take care. Okay, you too. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> this is probably the first time she's lost that amount of weight in her whole life because she's just been going up and up and up, although she was 700. Okay, so she did lose weight, yeah. Did you hear him? <laughs> Is my cardiologist doctor. I've got to go to him and he'll send him a report. And if he thinks it, then I, my heart will handle it. Yeah, we just heard that, so we can move on. I, I did kind of slip on my diet a little bit. Well, I'm hoping that he won't give me too big of a, a, a lashing over it. I deserve one. Hang on, so. He's only going to say, like, the facts. He's going to look at whether you've lost or gained, and that's all it's about. So, this does not sound good. But I hope you don't give me a big one. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. Step up. This is what we want to see. Oh, no. Hang on, that's the same. That was the same, right? So she's she's meant to have lost like another 25 pounds at least, I think, or even more, maybe. Wow. Hmm. Oh. Dr. Now is going to come down on you. He's going to roast you. We're going to room five. Table. Because I ain't gonna let that happen. Hello. Hello. How y'all doing? Good. 
And then, how was your trip down here? Good. So, are you completely moved to Houston? Not yet. So, when are you going to do that? Just got to find a place. Okay. So, how was everything going with you? Good. I had a slip up. I, I did slip, and I'm not going to lie to you. So, what do you mean you slipped up? I cheated. On my diet, I cheated. I was doing really good, and I cheated because the sweet cravings just got to me. It's not the... <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we have sweet cravings, but when these individuals are talking about sweets, they're talking about, like, baked stuff and, like, a whole lot of fatty sweet stuff. And when she'd go to sleep, I'd sneak in there and I'd eat some sweets. So... I can't imagine her sneaking around at night, can you? I, I think she knows that she's up. She was probably feeding her. When she goes to sleep, where do you get that? They, we had a bucket for the kids when they come home. I was dipping in their sweet bucket. She's stealing from the children. She's stealing the sweets from the kids. But she took and put them in the lockbox and locked them up and I can't get to them. Sorry, let's call it the fats, not the sweets. She's stealing the fats from the children, which is probably a good thing. I let the cravings overcome me. All right. And I had a slip up, but I'm back on track and I'm... All right, so since your cardiologist said that they think that surgery would be safe, all you needed to do was to move down here. But now you have to move down here and show me you're back on track. So I want to lose 50 pounds in two months. 50 pounds in two months? Okay, got you. But if you move to Houston and you're able to lose 50 pounds, then we're going to go ahead and set you up for surgery, okay? Okay. Is that a deal? That, that's a deal. We will see, I guess. <laughs> Is she crying? <sighs> All right, I'm sorry. There, there is some deal breaker. Your deal breaker is you go back to your eating habit. I'm not. <laughs> That'll be the deal breaker. I'm nope, not. Nope, nope, I'm nope. not. I'm not going back to my eating habits. I have too many reasons. I have 11 grandkids that want to see me live. That's a reason enough to push it away. And 11? And say no. Good. That, that's... <laughs> All right, so use that motivation and, and keep it up and we get you to your goal weight, okay? I love how stone-faced, like a poker face, uh, Dr. Now is. Okay. Sit so tight, we'll do some tests on you. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen his teeth, like him smile, like a big smile. Have you? I don't know. And make sure everything is uh, safe for you to go back home. All Thank right. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's a bit of a cryer. Hey, my love. Right. How are you? It's lonely without you here. I know. I'll be okay. I mean, I'm okay with leaving Arkansas. I mean, I'm originally from Texas. I just would have. Oh, she's originally from Texas. It all makes it all makes a lot more sense now. Like to have been able for my husband to have been here. Okay, well, baby, I'm gonna. Unfortunately, he's probably busy elsewhere now. Start finishing up the packing. Okay, my love. Bye, bye, baby. That's my love. Okay. It actually shocks me that they do have partners. A lot of these individuals do. It, it, it shocks me just because they're in this state. It is not really appealing for people to be with them in this state, is it? let's just be honest. But if they've got that feeder edge and they just want to binge out and eat together, then I guess that could be motivation. Can you help her? Well, she got it. And I'm not saying she's not worthy of love or anything like that. But what I'm saying is like, this is taking on a big, amount of responsibility being with an individual like this, pun intended, a big amount of responsibility. Okay. So how, how, how soon when you get down there do you expect to see Dr. Now? I uh, think I'm going to see him Saturday. 
You think he's going to approve you for the surgery? Yeah. He's already approved me. That's why I'm moving down there. You better be okay. You better call me at least once or twice a week. Once or twice Aww. a week. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous. Okay. She's going to Houston. Yep. Oh, well, there's a job. I'm pulling the driveway yeah, right there. Yeah. Am I going to be able to make that turn? Yeah, you're going to be able to make it. You got it. Stop right here? Yep. That's a good deal. So I'm guessing the show is paying for this house. Let me know in the comments below. I'm not exactly sure. I think they pay for everything. It's a cute little thing. It's it too cute. It is adorable. One thing I don't like, no rails. That's it. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get up them stairs. The challenges we don't have to consider, right? It's like, yeah, you don't want to have to have, a, have your body, let your body get to a position where you have to worry about railings, you have to worry about wheelchairs, all these things that help you just move. You just want to be able to walk like a normal human, right? Oh, look at the cute thing. Oh, she's not even helping her up. Oh. Oh. Cute little house. Yeah, it's cute now. We'll see in future how it's going to be looking. Washer and dryer. I made it. Oh, how cute! It's only one bath. There ain't no two baths. And that's a closet. I'm so, so exhausted. There ain't no, Please. there's only one. I don't even know if I can see it. Oh. Damn, is she gonna make it to the operation? Oh, God. Oh. It's good we got this place furnished. Oh. It's like walking into a place we already decorated. So I'm happy. Looks a lot better than the last place, I must say. About all that. But mostly, I'm just exhausted. Oh. Thank you. And think, what has she done? She sat in the car? Yeah, they moved a few things, I guess, but I don't think she was moving it. She sat in the car and basically walked in the house and she's exhausted. Don't let yourself become like this. We're headed to Dr. Now's office. Yep. I'm scared and excited all in one. in the disabled parking again. I'm getting scared because I don't know what kind of run I had. I know I hit a couple of tough spots, but I'm excited to tell Dr. Now that we moved down to Houston. And I'm excited that I might get weight loss surgery soon. Okay, let's get in there and weigh you up, sister. Houston. He would do the surgery for me. So I'm just really hoping down to loss ever. Doctor now told me if I lost 50 pounds and got down to Houston, he would do the surgery for me. So I'm just really hoping that I did that. 50 pounds. She was like 494 or something before. So she should be like 444 or something like that. I think she did it, pretty much. Oh, that's good though. I mean, that is good. We'll see what Dr. Nell says. I mean, if she just does a poop, she can probably poop out seven pounds. Hello, how y'all doing? Fine, and you? Doing good. That's good. Well, 
So how is everything going with you? It's going good. So have you moved down to Houston now? Yes, I have. We moved, we got into the house. Been there a couple of weeks now, and it's nice. It's a nice little place. So who's moved with you? Sam came with me. So only two of you? No, it's just the two of us. Okay. So she's going to be helping you and not enabling you, right? Oh, she helps me. I get well, on to her. Trust me. We have, and now it's even easier for her because they ain't no sweets or nothing brought into the house. Cause Stop blaming sweets. <laughs> oh, gosh, fats. You call them fats. We're talking about baked goods and stuff like that. They're fats. Most of the calories coming from fat. She is definitely, the one in the green is definitely a couple of burgers away from Dr. Now, you know, from the surgery, I'm telling you. We ain't got no kids there for us to have to buy the sweets for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it's even easier. Yeah, hold on, I don't want to get this idea that you can get comfortable now. Okay. You know, the spring uh, uh, chicken yeah. and surgery is going to be a, a very risky for you. Regardless, even if your heart does look okay. So I'm proud of your progress. Since you stayed on track and you moved down to Houston, I'm going to schedule you for weight loss surgery next month. Then everything okay with your test. And you don't gain anything. Then we move ahead with your surgery. Okay. okay. So you come a long way uh, from your higher weight, um, but um, you know you still have a very high BMI that is going to be risk factor for any surgery. We need to be very careful with you because you have very irregular heartbeat, and that is something that uh, doing anesthesia and surgery can get out of control without anybody able to reverse it. So every little bit of weight that you lose is going to help, okay? Yes. I am nervous for her. Yes, sir. All right. One well, nice to see you. Make sure you stick with the diet so we we'll go ahead with your weight loss surgery. Okay. Okay. All righty. All righty, let's do it. Let's move on. Doctor now did approve me for the weight loss surgery. He is going to do some testing, but if I don't continue to lose weight, he will cancel the surgery. Okay, so that's what you gotta do. You gotta stick to that starvation plan. Month eight. You know I love you. I love you too. Hello. Hey, how are you? How y'all doing? Good. Well, you ready for this, Rose? Yes, I am. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, get you started in a few minutes and uh, see how things will go with the surgery. Okay. And then after that, let uh, me get you up to your room and you're going to be able to walk this afternoon. Yep. And get some uh, liquid. Okay. okay? All righty. Any questions or anything? No. All right, we get you started shortly. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your help. Like now that I'm a student, it's been a higher, you know, remember what job I do for a living. Okay. Yeah. 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 Take our next. She made it. <laughs> she made it. Step forward. Mm -hmm. So far, I ain't had to take any backward. I've just been taking forward. Little, little steps. Rose? Things have been going well since my surgery. She's definitely smaller. I'm losing weight. This, this guy is, he's big. Wait, and I'm feeling like a different person. Doctor now said I was supposed to lose 25 pounds in the first month on the liquid diet. Liquid starvation diet, yay! And then 15 pounds a month after that. 
I'm really hoping my weight loss is on track. That's a whole lot better than what it has been. Not quite enough. Please go to room five. Hello, how y'all doing? All right, Fine, sir, how you doing? You. Fine. Well, how's your progress going on? It's going good. So, you working harder? Yes, I'm working very hard. All right, Rich, I'm proud of your progress at the beginning. She seems really low energy. You know, before she was quite, she's quite an energetic one, but now she's like really subdued. I had doubt that you're going to make it because of so much difficulty you had with your heart and all those issues. And I wasn't sure you're going to stick with healthy eating habit, but I think now you prove that you can do that. And once you get your weight down, you'll have some extra skin that we need to take off. Okay. And when you get that all done, you'll be at your goal weight. Okay. Okay. So the key issue is to stay focused with your eating habit. Don't go back to old eating habit that you had. Yes, sir. So that will be something that you need to focus on. Okay? Yes, sir. She ain't going back to those old habits. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, she's not. <laughs> I'm not. Has she got blood? Has she got blood on her belly there? Like there on her belly? Is that blood? Oh, jeez. I don't have no enablers. No. Good. Doctor, now I do have to tell. Look how big he is. That is that he's a big guy. He definitely needs to be oh, cutting, cutting that. I mean, changing that diet, obviously. Tell you when I first came, didn't think there was no hope in the world for me. And I have got to tell you, you have gave me my hope back. You have gave me something to look forward to, something to live for. Oh my God, is she going to make Dr. Now cry? I doubt it. And well, I'm I just glad want you to, stuck with it. I just want to tell you thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I had my doubt at the beginning that we would be able to do a surgery because of your heart. Yes. But uh, you stick with the program and you lost some weight and everything got better. So we took a chance with you. No, I appreciate and, uh, you taking that chance. And I'm glad that you're doing good. Uh, so stay focused with that, but you still have an issue with your heart that you need to follow yes. up. Yes, sir. And that is something that hopefully will get better with your weight loss. Yes, sir. Okay. But I'm proud of what you have done so far. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That makes me feel good to know that you're proud of me. Well, it was a difficult, but you did it, mm -hmm. yes. and you stick with it, and just stay focused, you're going to be okay. See you. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. All right. If you need anything, give me a call. Okay. I'm proud of her, too. She has a good energy. She does. She's a bit of a crier here and there, you know, again, a bit, a bit too much crying, but she's, she's got a good energy. I think she's quite positive, and she's done well. She's stuck to his starvation plan. She's lost weight. She got the surgery, so she, she stepped up. I'm, I'm, like, impressed. I sure will. All right. We'll see you all later. Okay, all right. Thank, thank you, sir. You. All right. To hear Dr. Now say he was proud of me made me feel really good. Okay, we're going to leave it there. It's only got like, oh, hang on, it's the end. I guess we'll watch it again. Some days I have to pinch myself to make sure this is all real. I can't believe how much my life has changed in just a year on this journey. These are the gifts that Dr. Now gave it. me and he's so <laughs> humble about. It's just all of the day's work for him. I feel better and better, and I'm loving it. A year ago, my life was miserable, and I didn't know how to go on. And today, my life is completely turned around, and I feel like it's a miracle. Okay, awesome. You know, it was always in your control, though. You're, you are losing weight without the surgery, so I would have recommended her keep going, but obviously the plan was crappy, and she couldn't sustain that long. The problem is these weight loss surgeries don't actually lead to long-term success. A lot of the, the failure rate is very high. 
a lot of these individuals go back and become obese, morbidly obese again. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, I get why they do this because they're not going to change any other way. It seems like for some of them, this is the absolute last resort. I mean, other than me going and living with them or having a fat camp, which some of you are interested in the fat camp, who knows? That could be something. That could be something in the future. But anyway, this is my, the last of the video, so I'm signing off. Don't forget to check out my books. I've got these signed copies, so it's one bundle, and it's uh, 15, uh, I think I've got about 15 of them left. Once they're gone, they're gone. They're signed by me, and I write a little note in them, and you can get, you can get them sent to you wherever you are in the world, or you can get the ebook straight away, instant download. You can get a bundle price. And I also provide them um, coaching and meal plan service. So check out the links below. Good to be here and sit with you and just learn together and grow together, right? It's great. And let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't leave without leaving a comment. It's really like, it's helpful to the channel. It's helpful to others to get a little bit of, you know, talking and community kind of vibe going on. I think it's really great. And I love to read your comments too. All right, don't forget to go for it yourself and I'll see you soon.